what can a single push button do? Have you ever wondered how to let one single push button do several tasks when pressed in a different manner? Well, of course it's possible with the help of a microcontroller. So in this video, we are going to discuss the necessary algorithm to implement to be able to take different actions when a push button is pressed once, double pressed, or held pressed. For such an implementation, we are going to take some measurements and write few lines of code using STM32 microcontroller. We got a button to control today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Before we get started, I want to mention that the code that we are going to write today will be added to Electronic Piano Tutorial which you can watch from the card above. And if you haven't watched it yet, it's fine, you can still keep up with us. So enjoy! Alright, so now it's time to start with our MCU configuration. First of all, we need to enable a GPIO external interrupt pin and give it some meaningful name, like menu button. And now from the GPIO menu, we have some stuff to do. PA4 pin will be connected to a pull-up resistor, so in order to detect if a button is pressed, we need a falling edge interrupt, so let's enable that. External interrupt with falling edge trigger detection is our target, so let's turn that on. For the time being, let's not care about the GPIO pull-up pull-down mode, and we'll see how it goes. And the next thing that we are going to do is to go to the nested vector interrupt controller and enable this interrupt over here. And for button press test purpose, I'm gonna actually to enable one G by open to take some measurements and give it a name test pin. All right, so I think that there's nothing else to add. So let's generate our configuration and start coding. So inside our main code, I constructed this code segment over here. As you may have noticed, this part is only accessed only when this flag is activated. And this flag is actually activated inside the interrupt subroutine of the external interrupt that we had enabled. It is actually preferred to execute the interrupt subroutine once uh, an interrupt is fired. So I like to do it this way. Alright, so back to our code. So the main purpose of this code segment is actually to make it possible for me to measure the time period between two button press events. And this is done by doing the following. First of all, we make sure that a button is really pressed by applying the bounce procedure. And after being sure that the menu button is really pressed, the interrupt flag is reset. And then the test pin that I have initialized before is toggled using this variable over here by XORing it with one. So every time this part is executed, this variable will be toggled between 1 and 0. So now it's time to hook my oscilloscope to test pin and see if it works as it's meant to. If so, we will start taking some measurements. Alright, so far so good. Our code works as planned. Every time the menu button is pressed, we see the test pin is toggled. And here we see the time period between two button press event and it's actually around 500 milliseconds so obviously double click time period will be shorter than that so let's check that out so in double button press i've taken several samples and found that the time period between two button clicks is below 300 milliseconds so i will take that as a reference for me so the algorithm that I'm going to construct today is going to be based on the following. After the occurrence of button click event, we are going to check the following. If a second button press occurs within 300 milliseconds, then we are sure that it's double click event. Otherwise, we will be having two events to differentiate between, and they are one button press and held pressed event. And in order to tell the difference, I'm actually planning to do the following. If the GPI open that we configured to be external interrupt reads logic 0 for 300 milliseconds, then it's button held pressed event. Otherwise, it will be one button press event. And guess what? Using this algorithm, we can use one button to do three different tasks. So now it's time to convert this idea into a code and see how it works in the real world. 
All right, so I've just constructed the code according to the algorithm that we were talking about. And the first thing that you may see here is that I've removed the testing part because we are not testing things anymore. And I've actually changed some variables name to make uh, things easier to read and more meaningful. Uh, so actually, first of all, I want to show you the struct that I use to include every variable related to a menu button. And here it is. So as you can see at the beginning, I'm using a timer, a software timer actually. This will be based on the system tick. So I can measure the time passed after the menu button is pressed. And according to that time, we are going actually to take a decision. And the button enable flag is used. Uh, status is actually used here. It's actually an enumeration. So we can start the decision that we are taking here. There are actually three status and they are one click, double click and held pressed. This flag will help us store the decision that we have taken. And we can see here the interrupt flag that's only enabled in our external interrupt and disabled inside our main. And at the end we see held pressed counter. This counter will be used to take samples when the button is held pressed for a long time. So this counter will be also used in decision making process. So now let's see how all these parameters are used inside our code to serve our purpose. All right, so just like before, uh, this code segment is accessed by the CPU only when the interrupt flag is enabled by the external interrupt subroutine. After that, button debounce is executed to get rid of all the bounce related noises and then the interrupt flag is disabled here so we don't run into this code when no button is pressed after that we check if the software timer is enabled before here we are actually checking if the menu button has been pressed in a short amount of time so if the button has not been pressed then we enable the timer and the status is changed to be one click and the software timer is started here for software timer handling, I'm actually using two functions. This one, which actually takes the address of the timer. And inside this function, the current tick value is passed to the timer. And in check timer function, the timer value that we had set before is compared against the current tick value. And if the difference is larger than the time that we are going to wait, this function returns enable. So let's get back to our code and see how things are going on. So we were actually just here. Now if the software timer was enabled before, this part of the code will be executed and here it means that the button has been pressed twice because the timer was enabled before. So double click status is enabled here. And the main function of this code segment here is to keep checking the menu button pin voltage level. If the voltage level is read to be low, then the menu button counter will be incremented. This process will happen every 5 milliseconds after being the menu button pressed and as long as the menu button software timer is enabled. And when the counter value reaches its maximum, which gives the meaning that the menu button has been pressed for 350 milliseconds, the button status is set to be held pressed. Otherwise, it stays as it is. Alright, so far so good. So as you may have noticed within this code, we are actually storing the event type in the status variable. So after this whole part is executed, we are actually checking the time period continuously to check if this time period has passed or not. So when 300 milliseconds pass, we are going to take our decision according to the status that we have stored in this variable. And then both the timer and the counter will be reset. So this code can work properly next time that the menu button is pressed. So after having our algorithm and code implemented, let's debug this code and see how it works. So for the debug purpose, I've put three breakpoints here inside the switch case. And according to the button press pattern, we will see where our program counter will stop. And now let's put the show on the road. Oh, apparently I haven't connected my ST-Link. So I should have expected such an error or no problem. All right, so far so good. We saw that our algorithm works like a charm. So actually to make this whole system more robust, I'm going to uh, change one parameter related to menu button held pressed feature. So what actually I want to do is to enable this part only when one click is enabled. 
because this is what happens in the real world scenario so no need to check if the menu button is held pressed when the menu button is double clicked so let's do that immediately all right now it's time to put this whole algorithm into practice and make an application out of it i'm planning to add audio level capability to my code so for example when triggering this event one click i'm going to increase the sound one step when the menu button is double clicked i'm going to reduce the sound one step when the menu button is held pressed i'm going to do some sound level tests so let's implement that and see how it works abracadabra all right that was so fast wasn't it so i've just implemented the functionalities that i was talking about i won't be going through them because i'm going to push the whole code to my repository so you can check it out from there actually i'm aware of the fact that this whole code has become a piece of a mess so i'm thinking of dedicating a separate video to organize this whole code to make it more readable and easy to understand now you know what let's see how this whole thing works in practice and see whether we could accomplish what we wanted to implement Do you see how awesome it is to let one single button do all these functionalities? Well, this brings me to the end of this tutorial. If you have learned something new, please like the video and share it with your friends and let them know about Useful Electronics. Stay tuned and bye bye.